Henrik Piska, absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Great and to be here. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for your time as well. It's great to have you here in India too. Um, first things first, I, I want to start by, you know, our, our viewers of course will want to know this as well. Uh, you know, what brings you to India? You have a nice Indian connection which <laughs> none of us knew of. Well, my wife is from India, from actually from New Delhi. Uh, so we like to come every year. Normally we like to come around Diwali, but uh, this year we, we decided uh, to come a little later. And uh, I also love to, uh, to come to India because I love Indian food. Uh, and I always find it interesting to kind of uh, look at the Indian car market specifically, because first of all, there's some models you, you almost don't see anywhere else. And also I sure. think it's interesting to see the growth what's happening in India, uh, both in, in, of course, the mid-segment, but also in the luxury segment. You just have to look outside on the roads to see that growth as well. Exactly. I know the traffic is a little scary, but you, you've attempted to drive in India too, haven't you? I have actually <laughs> attempted to drive, and I, I let a lot of people pass until I realized I'm not going anywhere. Uh, so I realized you have to take a slightly more aggressive mode, specifically when you're in the middle of the city. When you mentioned the Indian market and you know how it's dynamic and it's changing and it's become more important now, um, what about it uh, sets it apart, do you think, from some of the other developing markets? Well, I think, I think first of all, I can definitely feel that the Indians, they love cars. And you see that on the road, not only just the fact that uh, you, you see a lot of cars are getting even personalized in India, even when people buy them. Uh, and you can see waiting lists on the new cars that are coming out. Um, and then I also think that traditionally, uh, India has been, uh, they have actually had access to both European, Japanese and now Korean brands. So there's always been a big mix of cars in India. Um, so what, what I also think sets it maybe a little bit apart is that you see um, maybe a little bit as well in China, of course, you see the whole span from the smallest car to luxury cars. In fact, the first car I saw that came into the airport in, in New Delhi was a Rolls Royce. And then you see, you know, a, a smaller car coming out, a small Suzuki. So you see really the entire span in India. And I think that's great to see. You see uh, uh, more development uh, happening in India uh, with new cars. Of course, you have two uh, car companies or several car companies here in India. Um, so, so I think that what sets it apart is also that uh, there has been, uh, I think, a, a large growth in, in, at least until recently, in the luxury segment. So, uh, and what has changed here is that India is not anymore just getting the old cars uh, that used to be the case that it would get, you know, two generation old previous platforms generations. or previous generations. Now, even as we see here, you know, new global platforms are getting introduced in India. Stuff. The latest things, yeah. That's been very heartening and it's great for us. I mean, we're very happy with that change too. Um, for me personally, when I, when, when, when I hear the name Henrik Fisker, my thoughts instantly go back to the to the DB9 and the V8 uh, Vantage, but of course, to a lot of people, it's also the Karma. Uh, what for you defines you the the best, perhaps? I know it's a difficult question to pick one car from your portfolio of designs, but what do you think it is? Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, my my first car was was really the BMW Z8 sports car, and maybe not many people know it in India. I don't think it was ever sold here. Um, of course. Uh, uh, the Aston Martins were great. Uh, it was it was fun to be able to design such a ca or iconic cars. Those we do have. <laughs> and you do have them. I've seen yeah. some here. And uh, the Fisker Karma, even though it has an Indian name, never really uh, got to to India. Uh, but it, we were, you know, it was an incredible project to be able to uh, start from scratch a brand new car company yeah. with a brand new technology. We were probably way too early before everybody else was there. Uh, but what was unique was we could design a proportion in a car that. Mm probably no other big car maker could really do. So that was very exciting. Uh, so I think it's hard to put a name on one car, but maybe there's a car in the future that I'll be doing. Uh, that's <laughs> going like to be that. exciting. Uh, we've also got two cars here with us. Just a little representation perhaps of what, uh, you know, what seems to be really working in India. SUVs in particular, of course, just hugely popular. And uh, you've got two cars here which are best sellers in their own space because the Scorpio is a traditional, you know, iconic sort of a model has a cult following in India, and that's the new generation that just came out a few months ago. And then you've got the Eco Sport, which is you know, the global platform, and uh, again, subcompact SUV doing really well from a price point of view. Um, so just wanted to get your sort of views on these cars as well, but I don't want you to necessarily critique them from a design <laughs> point of view, but what is it about you that, uh, what, what is it about these cars that gets you? I mean, is there a specific element or a size or what? what yeah, I, I, I think with this car, um, I think Ford has done an amazing job because it's very hard to design a small compact car and an SUV and also 
combine true sportiness with it. And I really think they've done that with this car. The proportions is very sporty. If you start with the front end, you know, they, they have really managed to create quite a aggressive sporty grill. Uh, the headlamps look slightly angry. Uh, so you get that good look that, that you want people to have in the rearview mirror. Please move out so I can get forward. So it really uh, says that. But they have also done something which is quite uh, unique in this type of segment. They have a lot of plan view in the car, which kind of makes the car look very compact and sporty. And uh, they have a lot of sculpture in the car, like this, this area here. So they have sort of combined some of this, the features that we tend to see on, on uh, sedans and sports cars with a strong plan views, sculpture around the hood area. So they have combined that into to this SUV, which for me makes it look extremely modern and truly sporty because SUV of course stands for sport utility vehicle yeah. and many of them aren't really that sporty but but this car really is. You know the interesting thing is that of course the compact ones are now catching on globally not just in India. Yeah. Here of course it's a big hit because of its you know really compact size and therefore good pricing yeah. but um, you know SUV for the longest time meant four-wheel drive. Mm. That's not necessarily the case anymore and from, from a designer's point of view do you think that gives you a little more freedom now? Well, I think what's happened with, the, with what we know as traditional SUVs is, of course, they've become more car-like. And also, I think people are not really buying them to go off-road, so They just speak. want that profile. They just they, want the They want the profile, and I also think they want the utility. So I think people are sort of looking for, at least in this segment, specifically with, with the Ford EcoSport here, they're looking for uh, something that looks sporty, a little bit of car-like, great to drive, but has that utility effect of an SUV. And you really get that with this car. And in this car, what's also unique is it's so compact that it's fairly e easy to maneuver around where we're used to SUVs being a little bit bulky. Yeah, and and this really combines all these attributes in, in one. And that's, that's probably why it's so successful. So it ticks all the boxes. All right, now you've got this car, which is uh, the typical sort of Indian SUV. The Scorpio has traditionally been one of the best selling cars in its space. And, um, you know, this particular one is the new generation, as I was mentioning. Uh, Indian designers work on stuff like this. You know, in the past, they would go to design houses in Italy, etc. Now they do it all in-house. What do you get when you look at this car? Well, they obviously took a complete different direction in this. This is, has more, almost to me, a little bit of a retro feel of the sort of original Land Rovers, uh, Toyota Land Cruisers. So they have obviously gone for a little more of the traditional SUV look. And with this, of course, you get the more massive feel. Um, and you get the, the traditional, almost safari look that you really are going out in, in the wild with this vehicle. Uh, of course, you have, uh, because of the more squarish look, you have slightly more interior space. At least uh, you're able to get three rows in, although what surprised me was that on the rear seat is actually more comfortable in the smaller EcoSport than in this car, because of course they're trying to add three seats on it. Uh, so. I think it's really two different ways of interpreting what an SUV is and I guess it really depends on, you know, first of all, what your personal preference is in terms of do you like more the big sort of uh, traditional SUV look or do you want more Something of the more sporty, yeah. sleek, aerodynamic look and that's really up to the consumer what they like better. Now, when you see something like this, uh, I want to get your sense of it again as, as a designer because this is clearly different to what you see in other markets. It has this slight gimmicky feel to it, and yet, uh, you know, in India, China, I mean, you talk about China and you always get a, a certain expression on people's faces because it is such a unique market. Mm. All this chrome up front and, you know, a little bit of that bling seems to work. This takes it to a different level. How do you react to that? Well, I think this particular design uh, is probably been made to really appeal to certain uh, people in India only. Uh, it is definitely has a feel of being very local in terms of design where of course the Ford is a global car and it has a very global look to it and I think this car the Ford would appeal to people who really want sort of the global look they know that somebody in Germany somebody in Italy is driving this car and they will be driving it here in India and you know it's sold globally whereas this car really is done for, for locals. Um, I have to say personally I think this looks uh, more harmonious, more sleek uh, than this. This looks a little added on to me uh, and not quite as sleek and, and dynamic as this vehicle. 
However, you also have to look at the complete vehicle here. It has a more of a traditional, like I said, off-road look to it. It almost looks like you can go on safari in this one. It's supposed or, to be that way, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, this one, you, you go modern and it's maybe more urban, and urban and drive fast on the Autobahn in Germany. Uh, so it's two different type of concepts. Now, there's something specific to Ford, which uh, you kind of see in this car too, with, with the way the trapezoidal grille has been done. But you definitely see it on the US sedans with the, you know, the new Taurus and, yeah. and cars like that, um, the Mondeo, uh, which everybody calls the Aston Martin influence. Right. Uh, they call it the Aston Martin grille very often too. Um, and a lot of that goes back to some of the work that you've done. Uh, how do you view what's happening with some of the mass brands today? I mean, look at what Hyundai has done with design, Ford itself. They sort of reinvented themselves. They don't look as, um, you know, they, they, they look more upmarket simply because they put more focus on design. Do you think that's a good thing? Yeah, I think it's a very good thing. I think, you know, I think that is a unique grill in itself. I actually don't think that, that <laughs> if you put it... Well, I don't think if you yeah. put it beside, you would actually say it looks exactly the same as Lassie and Aston Martin. I think that that's maybe the, more the fact that we are not used to seeing Ford looking this good. Yeah. So I think Ford has really taken a step uh, to sort of move in a direction where they are much more recognizable now, not only recognizable in terms of the brand, but also in terms of looking good, mm -hmm. where people say, wow, it's not about just, this is a great price or a good value, but the car actually looks good. It's really exciting to look at. And I think that's something that is necessary today to stand out. I think there's so much competition as ever before. We have more brands, car brands in the world than ever before. Uh, and I think you need to find ways to draw the consumer in emotionally because if you're only having the consumer choosing your product based on you know, very hardcore, measurable attributes, it becomes engine. a millimeter game, it's very difficult, and, and also people then will tend sometimes to, to either go for the price or stay with the brand they already have. So with a vehicle like this, you're really yeah, able thinking. to attract new customers because they actually say, wow, it looks so great. Now I wanna see what else is exciting about this vehicle, and I think, really that's the direction Ford has taken with the new design language. They really are taking a little bit of a risk because, you know, when you do something that is very emotionally, you know, uh, exciting, you also have a little risk that not everybody likes it. But I think it's a great risk Ford has taken and I think it looks like it's paying off.